All right, so this is part two because we got disconnected of class seven of Hashem Sefasai Tiftach, Tiftach. Um, and we are in section two of the Mimer, right? It's in the book to praise God would pray or the link. And we just finished the first paragraph and now we're up to the second paragraph. Okay, so we just talked about how Torah study brings a divine light from above to below and that a person does not have to be in a state of purity in order to learn Torah study, not halachically, which is pretty good because we're all in a state of ritual impurity today without the red heifer. Um, and not even spiritually, the, the concept of a person doesn't have to be 100% perfect to learn Torah, right? Torah is for everybody and it brings godliness into the world. No matter what our level is, we just need to be in a place where we're not obstructing the flow of Torah into the world. Okay, that's about Torah study. Now it's going to compare and contrast that to davening, which is which is the topic that we're talking about in this mimer is davening, right? So now it's going to compare that to davening. In contrast to study, in contrast to study, prayer reflects an upward ascent, right? We just described how that how learning br brings God and is down into the world. It's a downward ascent of divine light from Hashem into the world. Prayer reflects an upward ascent. What what is that mean man striving to refine himself and establish a bond with God, right? When we dive in, we are talking to God. When we learn Torah, God is talking to us. So it's a, it's a revelation from above to below. When we're diving, we are talking to God. We're reaching from us up into Hashem, or we're trying to establish a bond with God. This spiritual endeavor also draws down divine influence from above right? Because hopefully we're establishing communication, right? We're like, we are reaching up to Hashem and Hashem does bring divine influence down. It does bring divine influence down from above. It does. And we're going to see that Torah learning also requires us to ascend. They both are going to have, ultimately, they're both going to have both of these directions. But the main direction for Torah study, as we said, Torah study is from above to below and davening is from below to above even though the spiritual endeavor also draws down divine influence from above. Since this mode of service focuses on the elevation and refinement of man's spiritual character in this motif, the influence from above is commensurate with one's divine service. That's kind of the point. Meaning when we daven, we are reaching to Hashem and there is a divine influence that's, that's coming from above to below. But that divine influence is coming from above to below is dependent and commensurate with our divine service because the whole sort of relationship started with us reaching to Hashem. So with Torah learning, the, the light of Hashem comes down into the world. It doesn't matter on the level of the person as long as they're not blocking it. But with davening, we reach up to Hashem and there's a divine level that comes down into the world. It is commensurate with one's divine service. To give an example, it is written, Sheshes Yamim Asa Hashem. We would translate it normally in English, in six days God created the world. But the literal translation of the verse, in the literal translation of the verse, the word in, indicated by the prefix Bez in Hebrew, is missing. It's not there. It's lacking in the verse. If you look at the words it says Sheshes yamim asashem, god made six days the context of course is that in six days god created the world so that that's usually how that pasuk is explained on a, on a on a simple level but the fact that it doesn't say the word in or in hebrew it's just a letter bit allows us as we usually do with chasidos to retranslate right a lot of what we do is we take a verse and like we're translating on the simple level then on the on the a deeper level then on a deeper level then on a deeper level right the five the four levels of torah exposition where we keep on like going deeper and deeper so the fact that there's no word in which is the letter base means that if we're going to literally translate it we would translate it as God created six days. That Sheshes Yamim Asashem. God created six days. 
which what does that mean? It means the six sublime midas, emotional qualities, and through them, the world was created. Meaning, remember we talked about how there's 10 spheres, three of them are intellectual, six, seven of them, or six of them are emotional, and then the seventh malchus is like a, a, um, a container to, 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 to receive all of the six above ones. So these six midas, which are the six emotional attributes, chesed, gvura, teferes, netzach, chayd, and yisayd, these six midas is what God used to create the world. In other words, God put his energy, he invested his divine energy into these character traits and through them, through the, obviously God investing himself through these character traits is what he used to create the world. For divine influence to be continually drawn down from these sublime midas, divine service on man's part, which, what does that mean? That means the refinement of his emotional qualities is required. In order to continue the creative process of drawing Hashem's light down into the world through these six midas, um, we need to work on and refine these six midas that are in us and that microcosm affects the macrocosm because we say, right, that the six midas are on a macrocosm level. They're God's midas and he used them to create the world. And on a microcosm level, we say each of our souls also has these spheres and midas. And so they're, the, they're like the character traits that we each have because we are created in the image of God. So God has these traits, you know, on a macro level for the world and creation and everything else. And we, our souls have these traits as well. And so when we refine our six midas, that results in the world getting its sustenance from these six midas. How do we do that? Maybe we're all wondering, how do we refine our six midas? <laughs> Since it seems like there's a lot at stake that we need to be doing this if we want to be bringing this divine influence into the world. So how do we do it? This is accomplished through our divine service in thought, speech, and deed. So when we work on our thought, speech, and deed to refine them, then we are creating this vessel that the midas are being refined. Um, and through that, this divine influence will be continually drawn down from God's level of these midas into the physical world. So that's, a, that's like one level of, um, of an example of what does it mean to work on ourselves. A similar concept apply on an even higher plane, as if that's not high enough. As indicated by the phrase, May it be God's will, right? When we say in davening, sometimes we say Yehi Ratzai. We say it in davening. We say it, for example, we say Yehi Ratzai and Mikdash, right? We ask Hashem that it should be His will that He should rebuild the base on Mikdash. Now, there's a lot of Yehi Ratzains in in the course of the year and davening and so on. So, the phrase "May it be Your will" means that, that the person has the potential to generate a new divine will through prayer. May it be your will means that even if it's not right now, we're asking that it become your will, right? So that's saying that the person has the potential to, gen to generate a new divine will through prayer, that the Hiratun is a prayer. Nevertheless, whether this is accomplished or not depends on the degree of the person's refinement. Different from terror study, which we said before, doesn't depend on the person's refinement. As long as they're not actually blocking it, it doesn't re doesn't depend on their refinement. They don't have to be super refined. But davening, the person's refinement does affect the does affect the potency of their davening. I guess you could say. Thus, by and large, it can be understood that prayer follows the motif of upward ascent. Okay, nobody's asking anything. Yeah, you're still on the, 
יהי רצון, it means בעזרת השם? No, יהי רצון means may it be his will. You're asking Hashem to do this. בעזרת השם okay. means with God's help. So that's different. Everything is with God's help. יהי רצון means even if it wasn't at this point God's will, we want it to become God's will now. Oh, okay, thank you. That's a different, that's like a different idea. Yes. It's a more, it's a more powerful request. Yeah. Bezrat okay. Hashem is, is like we're sort of enlisting God's help and we understand that whatever we're doing can only be with the help of God. We can't do anything like on our own steam. You see the difference? You hear that song, I hear, I see it only in the prayers. I don't see it like when we talk. Like, uh, right, right, correct. Because we are, we when we say Yehiratzon, we are asking God. We are talking to God. We're not talking okay. to another person. We're talking okay. to God. And we're asking God. May it be Your will that You should do this, that, or the other thing. Okay. So that's that's not it's not part of a conversation with another person because because it's a prayer. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So, okay. Um, nevertheless, in addition to the aspect of prayer that depends on man's strivings, which is what we've been talking about until now, there is also a higher level of prayer that resembles Torah study, which means there's godliness being brought into the world no matter what. This is what is implied by our sage's expression that May God, my God, open my lips is an extension of prayer mentioned above. Remember we said before that the whole question is this Pasuk, Hashem Safasai Tiftach, God, open my lips and my mouth will say your praises. Um, it seems like it's a it's a it's it's an interruption between the end of Shema and the beginning of Shema Nesra. But then the answer is no, it's not an interruption at all. It's in the phrase that the that that is used and the and the mimer quotes, it's an extension of the prayer. It's an extension of the Amida, it's an extension of prayer. So we it's not an interruption because it is the same thing as the prayer. So we're actually connecting Gaula to Tfila when we connect the end of Shema to this Pasa Kashem Safasaitifta. It's an extension of prayer. So we that's why it's not a problem, it's not an issue, right? So we're going to explain this more, but it says this is what is implied by our sage's expression that may Hashem open my lips is an extension of prayer mentioned above. What that what does that mean? It means, as will be explained in another section, prayer of this nature follows the motif of drawing down influence from above. That there's an aspect to davening that's not only we are reaching out to Hashem which is dependent on how clean our vessel is or how refined our vessel is. But there's also an aspect of davening that is um, at the level of like Torah study in a certain sense, it resembles Torah study, which draws down influence from above. There's an aspect of davening that draws down influence from above. And this is what's represented by this idea of Hashem Safasai Tiftach of Yagitihilasacha, that Hashem should open my mouth, my lips, and my 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 lips will say your praises. This Pasuk epitomizes, which we don't know, he's going it's not being explained yet. He's just telling us that this Pasuk epitomizes the service of prayer that represents or that's similar to Torah study. Meaning we say that Torah study is the idea of drawing down influence from above to below, and it doesn't depend on the refinements of the person, as long as they're not blocking it. Davening depends on the refinement of the person. But in addition, there's a level of davening that's similar to Torah study, it brings down influence from above. What's that level? That level is represented by this Pasuk Hashem Safasai Tiftach, which is why it's called an extension of prayer, and it, therefore it's not blocking. Um, that follows the motif of drawing down influence from above. Again, we don't know exactly what that means yet. It's going to be explained later on in the mimer, but we're being told there is two directions of that that um, davening 
has the below to above, which is the basic one, and the above to up to below, that's similar to Torah study, which is the idea, this higher level, which is represented by the idea of Hashem Sefasai Tiftach. In parentheses, it, or not in parentheses, it's going to be the next paragraph. Okay? Are we like, are we okay? To explain by comparison, in general, Torah study follows the motif of drawing down influence from above, like we said. Generally speaking, Torah study is above to below. Nevertheless, within Torah study, there's also two approaches, right? Because nothing is ever just one way. There's also two approaches. In other words, both for davening and for Torah study, as mentioned earlier, there's above to below, below to above. They both have that because we're talking about a relationship. So a relationship is two ways. What is it? Mainly Torah study is above to below. Mainly davening is from below to above. But for davening, there's also an additional above to below that's represented by this idea of this pasuk that we're having this question about. What about for Torah study? What's, what are these two dimensions of Torah study? With Torah study, there are two approaches. Nevertheless, with Torah study, there are two approaches. One is described with the analogy of do, as in the expression of the do of Torah, tal Torah. And one is with the analogy of rain. These are two analogies that describe the two aspects of Torah learning. What's the difference between them? And we're going to do the footnotes in a minute, but I want to just read the paragraph and we'll go back to the footnotes. Do is constant, never ceasing. There's just always do. Every morning there's do on the ground. The dimension of Torah study that parallels do is not dependent on man's service, as will be explained below, right? The do is similar to the idea that there's just constant it's coming from Hashem, this light from Hashem doesn't depend on our level. The dimension of Torah study that parallels rain, by contrast, is associated with the upward ascent. Man's efforts, as indicated by the verse, a mist ascended from the earth and watered the ground, right? Because there was a mist that ascended from the earth that was like the, the evaporation of the water, and then it became rain. So that means that there was an upward motif before there was a downward motif. So that's Torah study. Torah study also has two things. Where we said Torah study is mainly down to up to down, but it also has two aspects. That's like the dew and that's like the rain. So now we're going to go back. We're going to read those, those footnotes, okay? So it says, nevertheless, even though Torah study follows, so back into the previous paragraph, even though in general Torah study follows the motif of drawing down influence from above, but there's still two approaches. One is described as do, as in the expression, the do of Torah, and one with the expression of rain. So it, um, like it says here in the footnote here, it says in the song of Ha'azinu, which is the prophecy that Moshe says to the Jewish people right before he passes away, Moshe states, let my teachings drop as the rain, let my speech flow as dew. That's what he, how he describes the teachings of Torah with both of these analogies of rain and dew. As explained in Hasidic thought, Moshe was pointed to two different approaches to Torah study. See the following section for an explanation of the difference between them. In section three, it's gonna talk about that, but of the mimer. But the idea is that one, dew is ever present and rain is not there has to be an there has to be an evaporation and then a condensation so do is constant never ceasing the dimension of Torah study that parallels do is not dependent on man's service right and then there's a dimension of rain which is dependent on the verse that a mist it's it's compared to the verse a mist ascended and then it rained so what does that mean look at the footnote here it says i.e rain like Torah study as a whole, rain represents influence drawn down from above because it rains from heavens to earth, right? Nevertheless, it relates to the motif of upward ascent. Why? Because it's dependent on the evaporation of liquid from below, right? That's the whole cycle. The water in the oceans or whatever evaporate, form clouds, and then it starts to rain. 
As the verse indicates, if there would be no vapor arising from the earth, there would be no rain. Similarly, in the analog, rain refers to the level of Torah study where the influence drawn down is dependent on man's input and effort, which are called vapors, which ascend upward. So even though the main point of rain is that it's, it's raining outside, it's raining from the heavens down onto the earth, but we know that in order for it to rain, there had to be some kind of evaporation first. So, so too, with Torah study, even though there's the level of Torah study that's due, that's just constant, there's, and, but there's also the level of Torah study that's rain, which is still coming from above to below, but it's dependent on the work that happened before. So those are the two aspects of Torah study. Again, the main motif of Torah study is above to below, but there is a level of Torah study that requires from below to above as well. Similarly, there are two approaches with prayer. Although in general, prayer is characterized by the motif of an upward ascent, there's also an approach associated with drawing down influence from above, which is what the main point that I was trying to get to here, right? Like it's, and I think that's just a footnote of where it is. Oh, okay. So here it says, although both Torah and prayer possess dimensions of both downward influence and upward ascent, the primary motif of Torah remains that of downward influence, while the Prayer's prominent dimension is that of upward ascent. That's basically the conclusion. Meaning, we're talking about two things here, right? We're talking about, and how are we getting here? Because this mimer is talking about davening. And so in this section, we have us comparing davening and Torah learning to help us understand davening, basically. Because we're going to get back to answer this idea of, of what is, you know, what is, why do we have this verse here? And how is this verse called an extension of prayer and not an interruption between the prayers of Shema and Shema and Esther, right? That's the bigger context that we're talking in. So within this bigger context, it's going into a, a sub discussion to help us understand what prayer is by, by comparing and contrasting it to, that, to learning. Torah learning is an influence from above to below, doesn't matter on the vessel as long as it's not obstructing. That's the main idea of Torah learning. Now, within that, there are two ways of Torah learning. One is just the downward flow, and that's, and that's it. And one, is, that's like do, or that's the, but the, it, or that's the downward flow. And the other is like rain, which requires there's some form, there's something that happens that there's an evaporation and then there's the condensation. The same thing is true with davening. Davening is mainly an upward ascent and it requires the person to work on their midas and their refine their midas and thought, speech, and action. Um, and at the same time, there's also another approach of prayer, which is more similar to the upward uh, drawing influence from upward to below. And it's just drawing down influence similar to Torah study. So there's, you know, if you could say almost, there's like the Torah study aspect of tefillah, like there's a up from above to below aspect of tefillah. There's, a, there's the tefillah aspect of Torah study from the below to above. They both have both motifs. But again, Torah study is mainly from above to below. That's its main motif. And davening is mainly from below to above. But there will be another aspect of davening, which is this idea of similar to Torah study, just being a conduit to bring godliness into the world, which ultimately that's going to be this verse of Hashem Sefasai Tiftah, that's ultimately going to be that level, which is why it's not going to be a, a, a um, break between Shema and Shema and Esther to say that verse. Okay, it looks like. Um, Spoiler alert. What? Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And have Slaka getting your computer on track. I have no idea what's going on. Ask so. someone younger. <laughs> I've been <Please>. asking. <laughs> but yes, I should ask more. Anyway. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yes. Thank yes. You. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, everybody. Yeah.